Graham here and I thought I'd give a bit of a walk around on the uh, chassis of my Sterling single which I'm making at the moment or attempting to make and I wanted to just point out a few things if anybody else is thinking about it um, some of the issues I suppose I found in the design while I've been going along um, just looking at the back here down down here we have the steam brake and you can see that I've reduced the thickness of the bracket that goes across and the reason for that is is that the steam brake has to tilt and I found that without that reduction it wouldn't tilt sufficiently so that was that the other thing you'll notice here I've cut away the top of the axle block uh, mounting the horn blocks and the reason for that is, although the boiler only comes to about here, you've got to allow some expansion. So that is to allow for expansion on the, on the boiler. Now the other thing is, which I think other people have mentioned as well, is that the Sterling single, if you follow the Reeves design, the clearance underneath the boiler is very, very small. So I've done a couple of things. I first of all come up with a new eccentric which instead of being split vertically is split at an angle which means I can get a much lower height on the eccentric than normal. The second one was the water pump and here I've got deviated from the Reeves design and reduced the height of this boss and also made a low profile um, what do you call it T-piece for the water pump there. Um, the other thing is if you are thinking of building a sterling single is that um, the frames are actually bent, they're bent here and here and everything has to be done pretty damn accurately so if you are thinking about it then this bend is really important and it's quite tricky to achieve. I was fortunate, I got my frames, I drew them out and then I got the frames laser cut and the people that did the laser cutting had a bender and they put the bend in for me. So I cannot claim any uh, credit for that. So what else is there on the Sterling single? Um, generally speaking I think people like the look of the Sterling single um, it's nice with its big uh, driving wheels. The driving wheels are something like 210 millimeters diameter. And oh, the other thing I will just show you before I put compressed air onto this and get the thing running is the frame that I've made. So this lifting frame is brilliant. <laughs> Say brilliant. I thought I'd just knock something up. I got some oak that was left over from a furniture project and I've built a lifting cradle so by I got some uh, stainless steel threaded rod from Tool Station in the UK, not very expensive. Put a uh, bearing at the bottom here, bearing up here and then an arrangement here to allow it but it's great it's very very easy to raise it up and down and the number of times you need to raise a locomotive to work on it is incredible and the other thing I've did at the front here I have a hopefully can you see that hopefully you can there is a um, a gear and that allows me to let me just get this right, allows me to rotate the, the loco at any position which means working on the loco is a lot easier. A couple of other things with the Sterling Single, the tolerances, and I guess maybe this is my first loco I've ever built, um, the tolerance is really tight so things like the clearance here between the uh, brake mounting boss and the bracket here, <laughs> really small, a couple of thou, that's all. 
Um, tolerances between the mounting bolts for the reverser stand and the wheels are very, very tight. There isn't a lot. You have to be super accurate, I think, in most of the stuff. And uh, one of the things I'm not happy with at the moment on this is the brake pulling arrangement. Um, the design will only allow something like 30 thou, I think it is, in total difference between the width and the wheel. And for me, whilst it looks right, it is very, very close. And I would prefer if this was just a little bit bigger, so I may end up uh, remanufacturing that. Anyway, that's just a quick walk around. Um, what I've done so far is I have had the thing running all probably a year ago when none of the rear uh, fittings were made or anything like that. But now it is ready and it's ready to really move, go on to the next part, which is um, preparing the loco for steam. And with it fitting the boiler, but I thought I would get the thing up and running. One of the things I did do was make some new gaskets. I hadn't made gaskets when I pre previously steamed it, but now I've made gaskets. And I thought, like, they're quite difficult to do because on the pistons, on the cylinders, there are, let me just move this round, a lot of bolts there on the front. Hopefully see. And I thought, how on earth do you make a gasket for that? Well, in fact, what I did, I have a drawing, which I was just the drawing of the, uh, the steam uh, cover, steam cylinder cover. And I then made a little punch. Hopefully you can see that out of a bit of silver steel drilled a hole through the end of the right size, tapered the end and hardened it, and then to, to cut the holes it was simply a case of position that over the hole, spinning it, and there was a hole made for the gasket. The the uh, what I'm using for gasket material is uh, just brown paper, brown wrapping paper. I'd read on a couple of the forums that people recommended this, and I thought, well, I'll just give it a go. It's a lot cheaper than buying the uh, specific gasket material, and it seems to have worked. It seems to have worked fine. Um, whereas previously I had weeps all the way around the front and the rear of the cylinders, that's now gone. So without further ado. Let's have a look at this thing running. Let's zoom back out. And connect my air supply. Let's just put it into neutral. Right, we're in neutral at the moment. The, uh, <clears throat> the compressed air that you can hear is simply leaking from um, around these, uh, this rubber tube. In fact, it's not really rubber tube, it was electrical insulation off of electrical wires. That's where most of that uh, is coming from. It seems to be running fine, I think. Um, it's nice and smooth, there's no knocks that I can really hear, there's a little tiny one but I think it's very small, and if you just heard that's the compressor going off in the background. And just in reverse, and the thing is now. And then backwards. So let's run it forward again. Interestingly, there is a little knock that I can hear sometimes, and I'm devil 
I'm damned if I can find out exactly where it's coming from. Sometimes it seems to run completely silently, and then other times just a little tiny knock. Um, mind you, having said that, once I put this down onto the rolling road, and I won't do that now because it makes quite a lot of noise, once I do that, though, that knocking seems to have disappeared. So I'm not unduly worried about that at the moment. Inside here, let's just have a look over the top. So we have the forward and reverse eccentrics. This is the eccentric which drives the, the axle pump. Um, I've put plenty of oil in. I haven't run this a lot, which is why the oil is fairly black, so it's basically running itself in at the moment. And that's just putting that into reverse. Some of the other areas where there is a very tight clearance, actually the, the operating mechanism the uh, forward and reverse lever the clearance across the mounting bolts for that bracket on the front there is minimal and so I had to remove two of the bolts and what I shall do, you can just see them down here, uh, just show that again. Those two bolts had to be removed because they fouled on the reach rod. I'll put some, um, basically some dummy bolts in there and just epoxy them in. Okay. Thank you for watching.